Okay. We go down for now. Let's go back to the hyper cars. You're fine. These are the ones so when
go check out the hypercars again. told me about it. I forgot all about that car.
Exciting events of the day happens. The vintage aerial parade, and today luck is on our side. Look at this. It's just incredible. I mean, if you had asked me a half hour ago if we were going to make this, no. How did they do that? I know. We also could not do these air shows without our incredible chair, Rich Kinney, Phil Kendro, and Bill Allen from Allen Airways. America's finest city is also a Coast Guard city, the Guardians of the Southwest Stand. Semper Paratus, ready to and save. There you go. Your tax dollars at work. Going to make another pass for our first technician and petty officer, Kendall Apple. Captain James Stittler, our sector commanding officer, would like to thank the people of San Diego for the exceptional support you've given our 1,000 plus Coast Guards and women stationed around San Diego. Look at that. Their operational area is phenomenal. I mean, they're dealing with drug units or more. And then return. That's the important part, too. Whether it's a giant cruise ship or a disabled sailboat, keep that in mind, you learners. And we have some of the highly proficient hoisting air crews, most highly proficient anywhere in the world. Data point to Mexico, as far offshore as it can reach without the data point from fueling. Up next, this is the R-44, John Grassberger. It's the yellow helicopter you might have seen in the last year as well. It's kind of like cars and copters. So we invited John to come back and join us with his R-44 helicopter. This is a Robinson R-44, beautiful aircraft, four-seat light helicopter produced by Robinson Helicopter. Mr. Robinson is our all of fame at the United Space Museum. We've been doing this since 1992. Based on the company's two-seat Robinson R-22, the R-44 features hydraulically assisted flight controls. First flown on the 31st of March, 1990, Frank Robinson's first helicopter was delivered in the early 1970s. It flies up to 150 miles an hour and up to 350 miles. Perfect gift item for the replacement of the aviation carriers. But so much more. He's having a lot of fun. So are we, are we? Flying out of San Diego since 1935, playing double copies at 50. What's fun with that is you can invert. That's why its name spelled backwards is aerobatic. Put that around as the top here. It's designed for flight training, utilities, personal use. It's a tail dragger aircraft, a tail wheel. Uh, what we were the is from plus 5G to minus 2G. That'll scramble your eggs, whether it's morning or not. Mike Valley, he's going to give you one more pass. 
these are just, just phenomenal. And probably this will have uh, some of the classic Cubs, the Cub, the uh, aircraft, the Cub. Uh, uh, the Cub, and they all had that, I mentioned the training capability, that they used to be there to teach the skills for uh, for learning uh, pilots. And it's probably became very popular because of what it could do. Here he comes. Mike Daly into one more round here, and then we'll get the uh, the Cubs coming in next. Not the Chicago Cubs, and the Stroke Padre fans came in. Even now. Beautiful airplane. Thank you, Mike. Oh, that's the pits. The pits came early. It's not the, yeah, well, always improvise. That is a pits S2. Out of order, but no demerits on this one. Yeah. And meanwhile, the so Piper Cup. And there's the beat. That aircraft has accumulated many competition wins since its first flight in 1995. Hey, Kevin Nice, I want to take those turns. You can do a lot of fun stuff with these. Three control, and there's also Captain Debbie Ramsire, who worked out for us about 30 years ago. Her cub's nickname was Buck, and she wanted to own one ever since. And she bought her cub last year from the West Coast Mr. Cub. That's uh, Len Buckle, who owned it for 50 years, and I was there in the hangar with her when she was making that deal. And this boy is here. Sorry, Tom, that plane was not. Debbie is a member of the 99th of the flying organization. Cups are still flying today. They're highly prized as Bush aircraft as well. So that's the adventure. Look at this. Straight eight in. Yeah, I love your question. What year? Uh, we're going to have two more passes of the Cubs here, so I'm sure you were taking notes with my but avid detailed description of the notes, and just write down, share that with the person here. The reason I ask, because the guy's got a 1930 Packer, and then we're going to be sure Mark McCoy, they go over there. They're a lot of fun to... They're fun, you gotta respect them, they're fun to taxi too, you can go back and forth like serpentine. Yeah, she's a run by a nose if you like. Here come the cops! <laughs> On that note, the Bobby Street, nice to see you again today. Get her! Called by Zach Harris, Michael Tracy, here we go now, and John Collins, and this is John's first time in the top four of the NBA's great smoke side, look at that, gorgeous. You see how the airplane sits up, you got it. It's a channel wheel, so that nose popping on and in the air is right up here. When he was a Boys Republic and Chino. Where's the. That airplane was built for him by Bill Cotton and my dad. Oh, he's here. 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 He's here.
of all time, they always dreamed of having this car, and they brought it to this guy, and he ripped them off, and the parts were left. And they lose interest in the hobby, and they just get discouraged. I, there's probably as many of those people as there are those of us that are committed to the hobby. Randy is one of those people, even though the Duesenberg is probably the most expensive American mark to restore, he's always had a fair shop price, he's always explained how... Oh, look at that. Doggy, doggy. Today's aircraft, uh, I'll take one more pass here, I think, flown by Chris Overson, Dave Stillinger, and John Hickman. Vicky's right and wrong with Chris, whose aircraft has previously flown to the Concour as well. Oh, 